All right, guys. So this week's Tuesday news is about Scarlet and Violet. You might be able to tell that I'm a little disappointed, but I love the games. Don't get me wrong. I love these games. They are amazing. The open world concept, you know, they got a great formula going for them, but there is a lot of problems. And I think it's mostly Game Freak rather than, you know, anybody else. And I don't know. Are they lazy? Are they just getting by with the bare minimum? You know, you guys decide. And uh, yeah, there's not much else on the news block. You know, we do have a couple things on Poke Beach like normal. We have Dragonite promos, which I talked about last week. They are actually shipping out to GameStops now. So we might check on your GameStop if they have the Dragonite GameStop promo. Um, very cool looking promo. Unfortunately, he's got the GameStop stamp on there. There is a UK version, I think, I believe I touched on in last episode where it actually has the Silver Tempest logo on there. Much better than this one. So, yeah, maybe you want to get your hands on that version. And there are some V-Star Universe leaks. Once again, we have Soul Rock and Lunatone. Look at this, guys. We have a art rare of Lunatone and Soul Rock. Both look very good. And uh, yeah, overall, home run of a set. I can't wait to open some of this set. I've been talking about it pretty much every new cycle. And there always seems to be new cards revealed like every single day. But with, um, I almost said Sun and Moon, with... Scarlet and Violet taking over the news cycle this week. That's what we're going to be talking about mostly. Now, a lot of people have been talking about the frame rate issues and loading in. I mean, this is pretty much the perfect experience. You try to catch something or there's a lot of stuff in the background and it really struggles to load. I don't really notice too much when I'm actually walking around in the world, but when you're when you have a big backdrop like this or you have a city in the background specifically, things just really struggle. Things don't load in. There's a part where there's like windmills on the land. If you're a certain distance away, they're just frozen. As you get closer, they start animating. When you're up close to them, they're nice and smooth. But as you get closer, like it, you can tell it's like just sucky frame rates. And I really don't know why this isn't optimized. You know, I'm not surprised. I kind of knew this was going to be kind of bare bones. I thought it was going to be on par with Legends Arceus, but Legends Arceus kind of takes the cake, you know, between the two games. Um, not for, you know, the actual gameplay itself. When Scarlet and Violet, if you're just talking about the gameplay and the world, I love this game. I'm excited to see where the Pokemon franchise goes. I think this is the way to do it. They say you can pick three paths, you know, Path of the Titans, the normal gym path, and then the Team Star path. It, it works well, but you do them best if you do all three at the same time. If you're ever confused on where to go, you can talk to the Pokemon Center lady and she'll kind of guide you, you know, basically, you know, what the next step is based on your level. And you go through all three of those storylines at the same time. So you might do a gym leader here, and then the next thing she tells you to do is check out this Titan over here. Next thing she tells you to do is infiltrate the base right here. So that's how that works. And you can just go ahead and go and just do the gyms. But, you know, when you go back and you do this other content, you're going to be way out leveled. So there is a path, like three paths you can choose, but it doesn't quite work like they want it to. Now, the best thing for this is to implement some scaling system where if you have one badge, the other gyms go up a certain amount and you can do them in whatever order you want. It doesn't really make sense. You know, the farther you got to travel to the first gym um, being the last gym. But if you want to beat that first, maybe they have the lowest level Pokemon. And it makes sense. You know, these guys are gym leaders. They should have a collection of Pokemon. And based on different challengers that come in, whatever time of day or whichever day it is, they should have Pokemon that they, you know, have for every type of trainer. So it makes sense to make a leveling system. And yeah, I don't know. It's just something needs to be done like that to balance out what they're doing here. And overall, the formula is really great if they can just do that. 
but it needs some work. So that is my biggest complaint. I love how basically as soon as you leave your hometown, you can go literally anywhere in the world practically except for the bases, which I guess you technically can, but you're going to be way under level for those. It gives you so much freedom where you can just go and just do whatever. And I love that. The end game for this game is going to be amazing. And it just really sucks that, you know, we're dealing with all this other stuff. Now, is it Game Freak's fault? I don't know. I pulled up this other thing here. Um, yeah, it's got all kinds of weird glitches. Now, I haven't experienced any weird things like this. Everything's been playable for me. All I've noticed so far, and I, that's the God honest truth, is the frame rate issues. But they are plentiful. Like the entire game itself, if there's too much happening on screen or a city in the background or people walking in the background, if they're like more than you know, 40 feet away, they start lagging. You can definitely notice the drops. But right here, we have a post from Mr. Sino on Twitter. And yeah, this is Scarlet and Violet. It's very plain, very bare bones. And look at these other games that have been released. You know, Breath of the Wild is something that it gets compared to every day already. Just something like Breath of the Wild and then you go to this, it's just so disappointing that they don't put more time in this. And I was thinking, you know, the biggest problem, I believe, was that we had Arceus come out at the beginning of the year. They had a lot of time and effort to go into Arceus and it's a great game. I love the Pokédex system on there. But with Scarlet and Violet, you know, you have to think how much time was really had when, you know, you had Arceus in the same year. Delay the game another year. I mean, you could reveal another trailer or do another remake of a game. Just take as much time as you need to make these games what they deserve to be. This is the highest grossing media franchise in the entire world. And we're getting games like this. I mean, just look at this animation. What was that? What did we just watch? There's tons of memes right there, <laughs> okay? What did we just watch? There's some other ones. What do, what do we got here? You know, we got the Psyduck one. Here's one about the uh, walking around. I don't want to blow this up too much because it's, you know, it's kind of grainy even on the Twitter. But, yeah, look at this. When things walk away, you can kind of tell they get grainy and start disappearing. Yeah, the sandwich animation <laughs> again. Just, ugh, what is that? This guy was like freaking out on the back of his legendary, but I don't know. It's just so disappointing. They could have put so much more detail in this, delay it a year even, and it would be so good. I want a Pokemon game that I can play for years. You know, it's often at least a year or two before the next one comes out, even if it's like a different, you know, variant of a version. And, you know, it just makes me think, oh, like Ultra Scarlet and Ultra Violet are going to be great games. You know, they might fix half of this stuff, but, you know, they might not. This, unfortunately, is something that I was kind of expecting in a way. I am still upset about it, but that's how Pokemon games have always been. Even after X and Y, you know, in X and Y, you saw them start implementing like a 3D city and stuff like that. When you got into Sun and Moon, it was great, but it was very bare bones. You know, it was still like follow the path Pokemon game. Whatever the they're trying to do, it's a very stripped down version of that. And the old games actually got a lot better with time because they kind of stuck to the same formula. They implemented some things. Now, ever since Sun and Moon, they're starting to push towards a open world. And now we're finally here. So it's probably going to take them two or three games to really flesh out this experience, which is kind of sad. Now, is Game Freak, I hate using the term competent enough because they're great developers. I mean, they've really done Pokemon Solid over the years. But I just think they know it sells. You know, they don't have to put all these extra resources in there. They don't have to do voice acting in the... You know, there's hardly any, if any, voice acting in the games. I mean, yeah, you got the Pokemon, but if they, like, 
voice acted this stuff, made this like a real game, like essentially make this like Zelda, where it's like a living world. Now, I will say these are the most like livable living worlds that we've ever seen, and it's actually really impressive. It would just be very extremely impressive if we saw those details, but make this like Breath of the Wild, you know, do the voice acting and stuff like that. It would just be so magical, but yet here we are, a flagship release, Scarlet and Violet, the biggest games ever. You know, this is the biggest game since the hype of Pokemon two years ago, and it's the same old Game Freak. So I really hope something is improved on this, and uh, I just don't know when it will happen, but thank you all for watching, guys. Are you guys playing the games? Let me know below, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.